In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do this really awesome VHS inspired retro footage look right inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's get into it. So once you're inside of Adobe Premiere Pro, you've got a brand new composition created, your footage is on the timeline, we can begin with this effect. And to begin with this effect, we're gonna go into effects and search for Lemetri Color. So Lemetri Color should be under color correction. You wanna drag that on top of your footage. And then we're gonna go into basic correction. Now, inside of the Lemetri Color tab, we want to first begin by going to the exposure and just pulling this down just a little bit. VHS effect doesn't look properly exposed, so we just wanna pull this down half a stop in the exposure. So we'll go to negative 0.5, and then we'll increase the contrast by quite a considerable amount. So we'll go up to 30%. Now we'll move down to the blacks and we'll increase the blacks up to around 100%. There you go, that looks nice. Now, moving on, we'll go down to creative and inside of creative, we've got a few different settings that we can adjust here. So first is faded film. We're just going to increase this just to get that soft black look that you see in the VHS effect. So you don't have those crushed, strong blacks in VHS footage. It's kind of lifted. So you've got quite a bright shadow. So you really want to pull this up. Let's pull it up to about 70%. You don't want to take this too far. And then we'll pull the sharpening the opposite direction. So rather than adding in sharpness, we're gonna take away the sharpness. So we're gonna pull that all the way down to around negative 60. And as you can see, we've now got slightly blurry footage. But don't worry, we're gonna resharpen this later on. Now we're gonna to go to our vibrance and we'll pull this down a touch. And then I'm gonna move the shadows slightly towards the purples. Now, moving on, we'll go down to the curves. And inside of the curves, we've got our RGB curves. So that's gonna affect all color channels. And then we've got our red, our green, and our blue channels. And we're gonna adjust a few of those in a moment. So to begin with, I'm just gonna add some brightness into the highlights. So I'm gonna pull this top right to the left. And then I'm gonna crush the shadows just a little bit, but not a lot. It's got to be very subtle. So I'll pull the bottom to the right. Then we'll hop over to the green channel and we'll pull the highlights on the green. So that's the top right over to the left. We'll go over to the blue channel and we'll pull the highlights down a touch. So we've got this slightly green look on our footage. You don't want this to be overpowering. So fine tune this to a point that you're happy with. And then once you're happy with that, we can just go down to vignette and we're just going to add a soft vignette onto our footage. So as you can see, if I increase this, it's going to give me a white vignette. But if I take this away, it's going to give me a black vignette. That's looking really nice. So this is before Lemetri and this is after Lemetri. You can see we've really aged the footage. Now, from here, we're going to go to the Unsharp Mask. So we'll search for Effects, Unsharp. And we'll drop the Unsharp Mask on top of our footage. And we're going to increase this up to 100%. So we softened the footage earlier and now we're resharpening it again. It sounds pointless, but it's going to add that deteriorated old footage effect look to the footage. Now, once you've added that unsharp mask onto your footage, we need to add some channel blur in between the Lemetri and the unsharp mask. So we'll go into effects and we'll search for channel blur. So that should be under Blur and Sharpen. We're going to throw Channel Blur between Lemetri and Unsharp Mask. And we're going to increase the red blurriness up to around 20%. So at the moment, it's on 24%. And that looks nice. Now, unfortunately, we can see this green border around the edge of the video. And that's not what we're going for. So in order to remove this, we're just going to select Repeat Edge Pixels. And then from there, we're just gonna change the blur dimensions from horizontal and vertical to vertical only. Now, we've got the red channel blur on the vertical axis. Now we need to add a green blurriness on the horizontal axis. So we'll add another pass of channel blur. We're gonna increase the green blurriness up to around the same value. And now we're gonna repeat edge pixels and we're gonna change this to horizontal. Now, I feel like that's a touch too blurry, so I'm just going to pull this down just a touch. So we'll go down to 15 on the green blurriness, and that is looking nice. 
So we're going to close down the channel blurs and we're going to go back to the unsharp mask. And now in unsharp mask, we're just going to increase the radius. And you really want to get this to a point that you're happy with. Now, if you pull this down to one, then the effect is barely visible. But if you pull this all the way up to a stupidly high number like 70, then it's a bit much. So you want to find a number that you're happy with. So I'm going to go with 10 and then we can move on to the next stage. So the next stage of this process is to add the correct aspect ratio. So the typical aspect ratio for VHS cameras is your 4-3 aspect ratio. So in order to do that, we're just going to add some black bars in. So go project, new item, black video, press OK, and we'll drag the black video onto video layer two. Extend the duration out to the right, and then we're just going to copy the black video and paste that onto video layer three. Select both of those black videos, go to effects, search for crop, and then we're just going to drop crop on top of the black videos. We'll go to the black video on video layer three, and we'll change the left crop to 90. Go to video layer two, black video, change the right crop to 90 as well. And there you go. That's looking really nice. Although I feel like we haven't got enough crop. So I'm just going to change that to 85. We'll change the other one to 85 as well. And there you go. That is a lot nicer. Of course, if you wanted to reframe your footage at this point, then you just do so by pulling over on the position. And now from there, the last thing that we need to do to this footage is add some sort of distortion. Now, if you've got some sort of VHS overlay, then you can just throw this on top of your footage at this point. But if not, then we can just go ahead and add some wave warp to the video. So in effects, you've got to search for wave warp. And then once you've found that, you're going to drop wave warp on to the footage. Make sure the wave type is sine. Change the wave height to one. Change the wave width to one. And then every now and then, we're just going to create a keyframe to add some distortion. So we'll create a brand new keyframe and wave height. We'll move three keyframes to the right. Create a brand new keyframe. Move another three to the right. Create another keyframe. Then we'll go back to the left three keyframes. And we'll change the wave height to 10. Now, if we look at that, you can see we've got this distortion on top of our footage. Now this effect is quite subtle, so you want to add a few of these throughout the entire duration of the effect. So you want to select all of those keyframes, hold Command C, move over and Command V. Move over again, Command V, move over again, Command V. And just paste this animation in throughout the clip. Now if we play this back, you can see we've got these distortions happening throughout the clip and it looks really awesome. And that is the VHS effect now complete. So thank you for watching. I really hope this helped. And if it did, then please do let me know in that comment section below. See you on the next video.